What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today we've got another deck profile. This time we are looking at pure generators. Now this is my current favorite way to play the deck. There's a lot of ways to play this deck uh, because it is one of those luxurious beautiful archetypes that does not need its normal summon but it is still very good on its own. Kind of like Eldritch, kind of like our other archetypes we've seen in the past. Dangerous, kind of, in the same vein as well. But, yeah. So if you wanted to, you could look at Invoked lists, you could look at, like, Synchro lists, you could look at, I don't know, I saw, like, a Spellbook list that actually was pretty cool, but that's a little more spicy than what I'm looking for today. Today I'm sticking just strictly to Pure Generator. That has been my favorite way to play it, just to really, really get a full grasp of what the archetype is. Just because this, this archetype is finally playable since Attorney Code for the first time in its, you know, life. So yeah, that's going to be what we're going for today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into our main deck here. Starting off here, we've got our normal zones, okay? Obviously, you're going to play three Lopter. This is the new card. This card is absolutely insane. No joke, guys. Like, I know people say the cards are insane. This card's insane. Just has a quick effect to tribute itself uh, during the main phase, either player's main phase, to special summon a generator straight from the deck. And there's so much utility with what that can be. That can get you removal. That can get you disruption. That should get you a search. That can get you a reborn. That can get you a special from hand. So many things this card can do in this archetype. So insane. Such a good card added to the archetype. And then I also play two Condemned Witch. Because we're playing the pure version, this card is really, really spicy. And once I read this card, I was immediately like, whoa, this card's like so cool in this deck. So if you don't know what this card does, because it is kind of an obscure older card, sort of, this card says, uh, on normal summon, you can search any forbidden quick play spell from deck to hand. Forbidden Chalice, pretty good card. I don't know if you've heard of it. But also Forbidden Droplets, which is coming out in... Um, uh, Rise of the Duelist in about a month like that also can be searched off this card Which is a very good card I believe that card will immediately become extremely meta and be played in a lot of main decks So now it's searchable uh, But the main thing that this card does is during your opponent's main phase it contribute itself to special summon a level 4 fairy Well, wouldn't you look at lobster 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 uh, level 4 fairy Yeah so pretty much this gets you a plus one into a free like disruption and then it gets you into lobter so that's like the whole idea there i didn't want to play too many normal summons to like brick on them because we're already bricking enough off of our big boy so three uh two three and two are good maybe if the new card came out and it was really good enough maybe i would just say screw it that card's too good and this card searches it then maybe i'd play it at three but for now i'm just playing three and two that's the ratio i'm going for then we get to all the boss monsters, the generator boss monsters. Starting off here, we have two copies of Har. This is the new one. One copy of uh, Utgarda. And then one copy of Needhog, as far as the disruptive ones go. So Har is the best one. He's the new one. If you don't know what he does, um, he is an Omni Negate. By tributing any two generator monsters or spellcaster monsters, you can negate any card or effect activation, uh, which is really nasty. But also, if your opponent adds a card from their deck to the hand outside of their draw phase, you can just force them to send a monster from their... Or is it a monster or any card? Uh, yeah, it's a monster. So they have to send a monster, but like... I mean, obviously they can get synergy out of it if they have something that's like good in the graveyard, but still you're forcing them to get something out of the hand, which can be very good just for card economy. And then we know what these do. This is just a quick banish for monster removal. Uh, and then this one is a monster negate, uh, monster summon from the extra deck negate. Uh, and the reason I like this one a lot, and I know a lot of people think this one's like not as good, and I don't think it is as good, but sometimes you end up in niche situations where you really only have access to like Lopter, and so Lopter can get you into him. Um, and in those situations, like, you don't want them because they have to tribute two, two generator cards to do it. And if you don't have two, like, they don't do anything. But you could still go into him, and he is still in the gate, essentially trying to scare your opponent away from going into the extra deck. So that's, like, really nice, in my opinion. Moving on with the generators, the final, like, three that we play is one copy of Hella, one copy of Mardella, one copy of Develgus. These are all, like, kind of utility in their own way. Pretty much, uh, this one is a quick effect to reborn a uh, generator monster from the graveyard. Mardell is a search on summon for any generator card. Uh, you only really play her because if you don't open field spell, but you open Lopter, you can just normal summon Lopter, tribute Lopter for her, and then she'll get you a search for the field spell. So that can still get you at least access to your field spell because in this deck, if you get to the field 
Code spell, you have a chance to win the game. And then Develgus, so he special summons a, a generator from hand. He's only very important because we do play some one ofs, and if you draw them, uh, you want to be able to pull them out of the hand with him. So I know he's another brick, but he keeps you from just being locked out of certain plays by just drawing one ofs. Uh, so he is important in that regard. So that was really nice there. That's it. Just playing seven for the main deck. You don't want to play too many over commit because you're just going to brick way too much. The only other monsters we play are hand traps, right? Starting with three Ash, two Valor, two Nibiru. Uh, these are the monster hand traps. We do play three impermanence as well, making our hand trap total ten. That's been a round where I've been liking my like main decks to be just with Ad Emancipator and Synchro Eldritch running around. You really don't want them to go full combo on you because it, it's usually just the same thing as FTK. Oh, and also the FTK. <laughs> that also exists uh, is a combo deck. So these are really important for those and I just wanted to have enough to like cover your bases. Also Nibiru. I usually don't like main deck in Nibiru in a lot of decks. I don't know, just a personal thing. But in this deck it's nasty because like if you have this card with like Lopter, you could literally go like uh, Lopter effect, tribute itself. Like once your opponent summoned five times, Lopter effect, tribute himself, then Nibiru from hand. And so Nibiru like wipes the board and gets like and, and summons himself and gives your opponent the token. And then your Lopter resolves. So kind of like the uh, Ritual Beast, how they can play like with Nibiru or Torrential Tribute uh, is pretty cool. So um, yeah, that interaction is pretty cool. And I would side the third just because that interaction is still like really good. So. That is it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells, we're going to start, obviously, with the most important card of the deck, the field spell. This card's insane, man. Uh, this The whole deck revolves around this. It gets you a free summon pretty much every single one of your opponent's turns, at least, and sometimes on your turn, too. Uh, Terraform is just another copy of it because you just want to see this if you can. Uh, and then it also gives you a bunch of tokens to tribute off to activate their effects. So this card is everything. This card is, is, is ride or die with this deck, especially this version. Um there. And then I also play one copy of Generator Boss Quest. Now this is a weird card. Some people don't like this card. Some people really like this card. I'm kind of in the middle. I'm just playing it as a one of just because it's fine. It's one more copy of like a consistency card uh, to help get us quest if we need it. The problem is I'm only playing seven of the boss monsters and you have to open this with one of the boss monsters for it to even be live. So I didn't want to overcommit to this and just end up seeing this way more often without even seeing like the boss monsters in hand just having it being completely dead. So playing it in one that's not going to happen too often. But it is still a nice card to have. The one thing that would make this card way nicer, in my opinion, is if the, the deck got, like, access to, like, one more really good, like, spell or trap. Uh, I don't know what it would have to be. I don't even want to, like, I guess you give them, like, a legit disruption card, or I don't know, something. But uh, if they had access to one more spell or trap that was legitimately good, this card would actually be the nuts. But it's just not, because you have, like, so many redundant cards. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. Moving on to our consistency cards after that, we have three copies of Pot of Extravagance and two copies of Pot of Duality. Now, um, you usually don't see this in this deck because so many people have been really going after like combining this archetype with other stuff. Not in this build, not in my preferred build at the moment, but these are both really nasty in the deck. So pretty much like in this version, you're pretty much controlling the game out with your boss monsters in the main deck so you don't really go to the extra deck. So Pot of Extravagance is not really that detrimental to you. There's a couple cards that may come up, but like mainly it's not going to. Obviously this is not a budget pick, but you could substitute this for like a third duality plus maybe some stuff like... Um, Drag down to the grave was another card, but because you you can't draw the same turn you do this, you, you can't. They kind of conflict. Uh, but drag down is a really cool card in the deck, uh, and then duality is just really nice as well. Kind of essentially like a, a pseudo search off the top three cards. The restriction can be brutal, but usually like you don't special summon like at all. The only time you're special summoning on your first turn is if you opened Lopter but not the field spell. So like you had to do like the Lopter into Mardell play. Other than that, you're never special summoning on your turn one. So it really doesn't conflict with much. I've done a million tests hands and a little bit of testing so that really doesn't come up uh three copies of call by grave more consistency again ash can be kind of brutal on your field spell uh especially because like ash can like mitigate your field spell for one turn and if your opponent's playing a, an explosive enough deck they can just kind of like run you over in that one turn so you don't want that to happen so that's why we have called here protecting from that. The one copy of Chalice. Uh, if I was playing it at three, I would consider playing like two Chalice, but I think what I might do is when the new card comes out, I might play a third Forbidden, uh, whatever is her name, Forbidden Witch, and then maybe play like one Chalice, one Droplet, because you're essentially playing like four copies of Droplet with the so like maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know, but this is still a good card. Even if you open it, it helps you play through boards. It's just like essentially an impermanence going first. It's pretty good, honestly. It's just a good card. Um, 
Oops, just a little bit less versatile than impermanence. And then we get to the traps. We've got three copies of Generator Boss Fight. This card, honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with this card. I've always hated cards that give your opponent resources, and this does give them a draw, but it gets you to a field spell that's going to essentially be like a plus million <laughs> for you. It's going to be at least a plus two. So your opponent goes plus one, but you go at least plus two off this card. Uh, and then over the course of multiple, multiple turns, it's going to be even more than plus two if you're able to control out the game. So got to play it, in my opinion, especially in the pure version. Uh, I do play one copy of Generator Boss Room. Now, this is a card I also have like a love-hate relationship because I don't think this card is amazing. If you don't know what it does, because it is one of the more obscure cards in the archetype, it says, when your opponent activates a card effect in response to the activation of a generator card or effect, you can uh, discard a card to make that card say both players draw one card. Um, so, like, obviously you can see, like, in terms of resources, it's not the best, right? You discard a card, your opponent doesn't, and then we both draw a card. So you replace the card, you, you discard it, but your opponent didn't even like necessarily have to use anything depending on the type of effect they activated, and they get a draw as well. So again, like it's a card that draws for your opponent, but it is a negate. It is a disruption, and especially in, uh, especially versus something like Ash. Whoa, whoa, sorry. What the heck just happened? All right, we're trucking along. Especially against something like Ash. Like I said, that can be very annoying versus the field spell. If you just happen to open this, this does just say no to Ash and it gets you a pretend, another draw, uh, which can trigger the field spell again, or something if they already negated it. So it's pretty cool. It's just like a cool one-off. And so the main thing I liked it with was with Quest. If I did draw Quest, I wanted another good card that just wasn't extra copies of the field spell. I didn't want to search field spell and boss fight every single time, especially if I already have one in hand. So that just gives more versatility to Quest. Uh, but it's totally a droppable card. I think it's an easy side out card a lot of the time. But yeah, the last card we have here. Sorry, I want to center that a little bit better. There you go. Is three impermanence, like I said before. Uh, finishing up that, giving us 10 hand traps in the main. That is our main deck, 40 cards as per usual. I mean, I think in any deck where you have like a very central card like uh, generator boss stage. Uh, you you need you really want to focus on like making sure your deck is consistently seeing that one card or, or setting you up with hands that can see that. So yeah, that's the idea there. Moving on to the extra. It's going to be pretty simple. Like I showed you, we're playing Extravagant, so there's nothing insane here. Just pretty much a cool rank 9 package. Starting off with three Calamities. By the way, I don't have three ofs of all of these cards because there are cards I had like one ofs of all of them, but I didn't have three ofs just for like Extravagant stuff. For, for simplistic stakes, simplistic's sake, uh, Calamities, you're honestly not really making this because like the idea is like if you would even have two level 9s on the field, it means you probably had like Har the Omni Negate and maybe like also an Utgarda or a Needhog, which is also like a disruption. So like in that instance, you're really going to take those two into this, um, which maybe in the right situation could matter, but it's just like the best rank nine in the game. Uh, there are three copies of a Phantom Fortress Enter Blathnir. Also a very good card, just very versatile with removal. It just is non-targeting, right? Banish, banish any card your opponent controls, banish a random card from their hand, banish a card from their graveyard, or banish a card from the top of their deck. There's just so many things you could do with this. It's just pick any one of Trisha Liz effects and just hit them, uh, which is pretty good. So I thought this was a cool card just in case. Non-targeting removal if you need it. Three copies of uh, Infinitrack Earth Slicer. Really cool card as well. So this card uh, says, like, if it kills a monster by battle, you equip it to itself. And then once per turn, you can attach as many materials as you want from this card to pop that many cards your opponent controls. Very nasty. Especially if you go battle phase, take something, and then you just remove three materials. Just go pop, 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 pop three cards. You're essentially just, like, playing with an access code talker at that point. Like, really nasty. So, pretty cool card there for cool, um, like, mass removal once you know your opponent uh, isn't, like, putting too much stuff on the board. Um, three copies of Jormungandr, the generator boss of Eternity. Uh, again, like, this is a cool card, and it's a generator card, and it's that's why I'm pretty much playing him. But, like, you're, you're like, never going to make him. If you're ever going to make a rank 9, it's not going to be him. He's cool, but he just is a... Uh, He's not good. Like, he rips a card out of your opponent's hand or forces them to get rid of a card, but they redraw for it. So it's like a lot of the cards in the archetype that just give your opponent resources. So they don't even go minus. Uh, so it's, like, not that great. Some people talk about it like it's great, and I really don't think it is. But, yeah, it's there. And then the last card we have here is Nine Lives Cat. This is a cool new card, actually, where it just says, Detach a material to target a level 9 in your graveyard or any monster in your opponent's graveyard and just reborn them, which is honestly pretty cool. Um... 
So, like, if your opponent had something really powerful in their graveyard, you could just bring it back to your field, hit them with their own med, like, get them in some with their own medicine, um, or you just reborn when you're level nines. Like, if you had a one of in the graveyard, you already went through Hella. This could get like this could be another way to get those back. I don't know. It's not going to come up that often, but it theoretically could, just like all of these could. They theoretically could, but they probably won't. But that's why we're playing extravagance, so you won't really have to. And that card's giving you pluses that can help you win the duel regardless. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for me here. Um, I think this deck is honestly one of the coolest decks we've seen in a minute. I think the the design of the archetype is insanely cool. I think it's insanely insanely like cool that it's like kind of true to like the idea of boss, like of like video games and like boss like creatures in in like video games and stuff. Obviously, it has its weaknesses. The main weakness being that you just gotta play seven bricks. They're all bricks. You never want to draw the big boys. Uh, so you're playing seven bricks, but like it is what it is. The rest of the cards are so powerful. When you don't see those bricks and you see nothing but like field spell and hand traps, like you just win those duels. Like, actually, it feels crazy, but it's true. Um, and then, obviously, when you open a hand with three boss monsters, you usually don't win those duels, but it is what it is. I still think the deck's pretty consistent, all things considered, with seven bricks in the deck. But, yeah, I want you guys to try it for yourself. Definitely let me know what you think of the build, as always. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always, new to, always down to try new things, so uh, definitely let me know. If there's a certain engine you throw in, a specific tech, I know about Drag Down to the Grave, I know about Metaverse is a thing, but it doesn't get the draw, and you can't act in, like... Uh, you can't activate like before they draw so it's like a little wonky there but i don't know there's just like weird things going on but cool cards but uh definitely let me know any other cool cards you think would be cool in the deck and i'm gonna leave it off there guys thank you so much for watching as always guys subscribe to the channel if you want to see more deck profiles from me in the future and i'll see you in the next one peace